let's make focaccia the easy way without the stress of measuring and i have a special guest who i'm teaching how to make focaccia boom focaccia baby is that right <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make the easiest focaccia at home. It's so easy, you really don't need to measure. I'm going to show you how to not measure and make focaccia. Now you can definitely follow the recipe in the description box below, but I would encourage you to try to learn how to make focaccia or just like bread dough in general without the stress of measuring every ingredient. I love to freestyle cook in this kitchen. Um, I teach the kids the same way, like just to use your intuition, your feel, your taste. Always adjust to your taste buds. Um, always go off of the feel because recipes, sometimes they just don't mix up the same way and you just kind of have to adjust a lot of the times. Today, I'm gonna show you our focaccia recipe and really just a method of making this focaccia. I've made this, uh, in a few days in a row now because the kids really really love this and it's just so easy to whip up and keep it in like a container or it's just ready for lunches for dinners anything that you want now because we have a larger household i typically like to make a bigger batch and i don't really like to measure but today since we are going to make a smaller batch i am going to just share with you how we do it so we have one cup of water just going in this is just from our well you don't need to warm it up anything like that just make sure that your yeast is really like active and it's 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 fresh you know if you are using yeast that you've left in the fridge for like years um you probably want to use some warm water just to activate it and see if it'll work or not um so i just have some uh active dry yeast that i'm going to sprinkle on here Into this, I'm also going to add about one tablespoon of coconut sugar. You can use any sugar that you want or just leave it sugarless, sugar-free, not sugarless, sugar-free. <laughs> okay, so now you can mix this up if you want to. I kind of just swirl this. If you've watched some of our videos, you know that um, a lot of stuff is always going on. So I like to do things fast paced. So I just, you know, you can mix it up like that. And then let's just add the flour. If you have a mixer, like a stand mixer, I would encourage you to use it just because you have it. But today we don't have one and uh, I'm just gonna use a spoon to mix all of my ingredients. I also have a tool like this. This is um, a sort of like a dough hook or dough stirrer, which helps really get the dough together. But if you don't have one of those, you can use a fork or you can use a spoon like this. So let's just mix that together. All you're doing is mixing all of the dry ingredients into the dough as much as possible. You're not going to make a nice smooth dough ball. This is what it's going to look like. It's a little shaggy. It's nice and still tacky, but not too sticky. So that is it for the first step. We're going to let this sit for a little bit so that the water and the flour can kind of absorb, well, let the flour absorb the water a little bit. We're going to put a lid on it here. I'm just going to let it sit in a warm area, which is in our oven with the light on, or you can have the warm oven or the warm setting on as well. I don't like to use it very much. Like I would turn on the warm setting and then I would just turn it off because it gets too hot in there. It starts baking whatever it's in there. So I have this here. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to set a timer for about 45 minutes to an hour until it kind of relaxes. And then we will come and just kind of do a few stretch and folds. Really, really easy. It doesn't take that much time. So let's rest this. About an hour later, you can see that the dough has definitely rested and it has absorbed all of the water. So with wet hands, we are going to do some stretch and folds. Not really stretch and folds per se, but really just stretching and trying to develop that gluten that's in this dough. So I dip my hands in a bowl of water here. I'm going to pull the dough up and I'm going to try to gather all of the, you know, loose ends of this dough. We're going to stretch it and fold it right on itself, just like so. I'm gonna prepare a parchment lined baking sheet here. We're going to proof this dough a second time just until it doubles in size a little bit. 
I like to drizzle some olive oil on the bottom to create a nice crusty layer on the bottom. We're going to spread it out with our fingertips just to make it nice and even, and then we're going to fold our dough right onto our baking sheet. This is what the dough looks like on my pan. I'm going to let this proof for about an hour or so in a warm, nice oven that's covered. It will expand vertically and horizontally as well. So let's put this in the oven and let's set a timer for an hour. Oh, gentle, Isaiah. Okay, take it out. Our focaccia just came out of the warmer. Okay, so. It rose a little bit and uh, we, it kind of stuck to my board that I was covering with, but that's okay. We're going to, now you can see it's still nice and jiggly. I'm gonna use some wet fingertips and I'm going to just kind of poke some holes in it. Can I do it? Ugh, no. I'm going to just add a bit more salt on the top. We like it nice and seasoned. We're gonna leave it plain, okay? Um, we are, we have the oven set to 400 degrees. We're going to uh, warm it up a little bit. Um, it's gonna preheat up to 400 degrees. I'm gonna let this sit one more time. Oh, actually, I think I should add a little bit more olive oil on the top as well. Add a little bit more olive oil on the top. We have the oven set at 400 degrees and it's gonna preheat. While that is preheating, I'm gonna put this on the very bottom to let it just kind of sit and wait and let it proof a little bit more before we bake it at a, in a hot oven. This is what it looks like pre-baked. It's going to poof up a little bit in the oven itself. I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of water so the steam will help it rise a little bit in the oven. So I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of water. I'm gonna put it in the oven at 400 degrees and I'm gonna, since it's a little bit smaller, I'm going to bake it for about, I would say 15, 20 minutes or so. Maybe about closer to 15, let's just say 17 minutes. Let's just go for 17 minutes. drag tray into this video. I'm going to show a very inexperienced person how to make focaccia without the need of measuring. That's what you're going to do today. Oh, inexperienced, huh? Yeah, because you don't know how to make focaccia, do you? So you're inexperienced. Right. It's funny because he's actually the baker. So this was like a long time ago and he baked like croissants and um, blueberry Bread muffins. And yep. But that's all non-vegan, so right. this is a little bit different. Yeah, been out the game for a minute. <laughs> Baby, we're making focaccia today. And most of the time, you know, when I make stuff, I don't really measure. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Okay. Okay? So we're going to have, we have, we're not really going to use measurements. So I have a bowl of water. I honestly don't know how much water this is. We're going to put that in. So put that in, baby. We don't do the flour, the salt, and the... You shit? Nope. Really? Just water. Okay? Do what I ask. Okay. Okay. Sprinkle yeast on top. How much? It's gonna be just enough to cover the top. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. No. I just cover the whole thing with three teaspoons and then there's one more. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Now you're going to put salt. So I would say for that much amount of water, it's about two teaspoons. So, so kind of just. How would an experienced person know that? I would, would do big how, pinches. But how would you know? If somebody had no clue and they're watching the video, they have a different So do three bowl. large pinches of salt. One. Two, three. Okay. But how would they know? 
That's just how they know. I don't know. Okay. Sugar. Roughly the same amount. Three large pinches. Yep. You can use a spoon if you want to, but... How come there's a spoon in here? Oh, probably someone was using it. Too lazy to take it out. How many? I'd say for that amount, like about a tablespoon. -ish. A tablespoon? Sure. It's not a tablespoon. This it's is roughly. milligrams. This looks about like a tablespoon. Exactly. It is, huh? Yeah. So wait, you said one tablespoon? Yeah. Next, you can stir that with a fork or you can just kind of leave it and then we're going to just add the flour. Yeah. Or the like salt that. made it all sink. That's okay. May what sink? The yeast. The yeast. Okay. No matter. Okay. I wonder why. You think it's like the salinity of the water? Possibly. Okay, so now mix. You don't have to do this. I have done it without mixing it, but you may as well just go ahead and mix it. Okay. So baby, next. You're gonna add flour, okay? So next, flour. How much? You're going to put, About just put. Enough until the flour is shaggy. Yeah, babe. Shaggy mane. So you could see. Like shaggy mane mushrooms. When you're at, huh? Mm -hmm. When you're adding the flour, you kind of can see that that is not an equal proportion. There's a lot more water, right? Clearly. Okay. So you're <laughs> going to add enough to where you think is going to be enough. And then you're going to start stirring it a little bit. When you start stirring, you'll see if there's not enough flour, you will need to add more flour. I suggest using a um, stiffer spoon. You could see you need more flour, so add more flour. Okay. That. You could still see I don't know. it's so liquidy. Add more. Or not. What? I'm just over here doing my thing. Oh, yeah? You need to make put enough to make a dough ball, okay? A shaggy dough ball. Yeah. Okay. Shaggy shaggy balls coming up. What? A dough ball. That's coming together slowly. You can see that, right? Yes. You can feel it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I could use a little bit more. A little bit more. Little Good little job. Bit. All right. Time for the hands. Nope. You use a stiff. So how I normally do it, you just use a fork or a spoon, make it into a dough ball, and that's it. This is the first phase. Why is that? Because the water needs to kind of absorb and when you put your fingers in it's going to be too sticky and it's not going to work out. So like just avoid hand. the mess because there's no point right now. Exactly. Okay. Got it. Got it. Oh. Oh really? <laughs> That's why I said you need a stiff spoon and stuff. That's why I always just use a fork or a spoon. Got it. They don't lose Good. It's huh? a good thing, right? No, because now it comes off. Well, at we least you know it. there's no chemicals going in your food, right? You want to be eating glue and whatever toxins come along with that? Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, me neither. I don't like the idea of glue in my food. Emmanuel had a haircut. And he wants to show you guys. He's so proud Whoa. of it. Oh. Yeah, Papa did a good oh, job, huh? Sure. Yeah, because you're proud of it. <laughs> it's good to be proud of things. You're proud of your haircut. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you see, this part is a little too moist. What? Yeah, I can see So it. you can you should add a bit more flour. A little bit more flour. It shouldn't look that moist. That should do it. So all you're doing is just 
trying to mix the dry in until it's a dough ball and then you're just gonna let it sit and make sure that you're scraping the bowl the yeah. bowl yeah my pants are flowery huh papa's having fun why is my hand so flowery because it's a uh, flower power over here <laughs> <laughs> We deal with the flowers, huh? That looks with, perfect, actually. With the botanicals, the plants, plant life. Flower power used to be a girl thing, but not anymore. Right? Nope. I embrace the flowers. <laughs> All right, now what? You're going to cover that and put it in a warm place for about an hour. Oh, for an hour. Yep. Now, what is this that we're making again? Focaccia. Focaccia. And when you do this more often, like me, I just kind of dump all the ingredients in and I just look for this texture. And I know, okay, I've got enough flour and then I'm just going to let it sit. I feel like it could use a little bit more flour. No, I think it's good. Don't. You think it's good? More. Yeah. All right. See, I would have overdid it if I didn't know. Where, why do you think that it needed more flour? Uh, it just looks a little moist in some spots still. That's a like good, this. we don't want it to be too dry. Okay, so it should have like a slight glisten to it. And like um, when you touch it, it's a little bit tacky. A little tacky, okay. Like that. So, okay. So, that's fine then, okay. All right. Yeah, so then that's a good thing. Boom! Focaccia, baby! Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's always so fun having you on, baby. Everyone loves you. Probably more than me, baby. Shut up. Oh, Get geez. out of here. Everyone loves here. Trey. Remember, I'm the low energy... Shut what is up. it? The, um, what, what did she say? I have no clue. <laughs> you remember? No, but I remember what you were talking about. Low okay. energy, don't need to be on the video. Right. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, like, tore me down. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the video for like 10 seconds. All right. All right, baby. Um, I would suggest putting it the other way because it's going to poof a little bit and I don't want it touching. Okay. And then just put it by the oven. Or you could put it inside. Put it. It's not going to be too hot? No. Got it. Not the top the of the oven. Yeah, just like but inside. Yeah, I mean, that is the stove top. You're right, Missy. Because it's nice and warm in there. Yeah, it is. OK, set a timer for one hour, babe. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> hold on, let me see if I can remember this thing. Oh, yeah, while you mess it up. Press the top. Um, just leave that. Leave Here, it. Look. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. oh, does it not take minutes? Zero, zero. Okay, no. start. Okay. Good job, babe. <laughs> I forget. I'm going to forget it again. It's okay. It's not the first time. So now we just wait. You're going to have dinner. Got it. Boom. Gotcha. No, not yet. Now what do we do? So you're gonna wet your hands in that bowl of water. Well, my hands are already wet. Okay. You're going to kind of cradle it on each side. Yes, three to six, three and nine o'clock. Pull it, stretch it, and then, yeah, like that. It's kind of sticky still. Just, that's why you have to have wet hands. Yep, and then flop it down. No, no. <laughs> wet your hands again. Yep, turn it 90 degrees and then do it the same way. And then flop it on each itself. Yep, like that, flop it on itself. Yep, so wet your hands again and then 90 degrees. And you're gonna start creating a smooth surface. Now what do I do? Huh? Now what do I do? 90 degrees, do it again. Okay, now we'll do it again. 
Yep. And you see how it's getting a little bit more smooth? Kind of. It feels like it definitely needed more flour. Nope, that's perfect. Nope. You're going to try to gather all of that, the stuff Stop that's on underneath. Go like that. And like that. And just fold it like that. You see that? Got it. So it's nice and smooth here. All right, so how many flips are we doing? Um, I'd say just like six, maybe eight times, just until it's nice and smooth. And then I want to um, add some olives to it. Oh, you just add that stuff in now? Yeah. Let's just add it, and you're just going to um, kind of fold it in. Do I still do those tucks? Those I think you blocks? could, yeah. And I'll just push it in? You could push it in. But... So you can fold it in right so now. So what's and the then point of doing those folds like that? What it makes that it nice and smooth on the top. And then it just like all the shagginess just becomes one big ball. And then you're stretching the gluten, making it. Um, I remember that. Yeah, it, you're developing the gluten base. Right. OK, so that's what we're doing. So now you can kind of just fold it, I think, with the wet hands. Yeah. Or you could just continue to do that. Uh, I feel like it needs to be like kind of. I don't want to over knead it, though. I don't think you can you over knead it. The more you need it, the more gluten. Do you guys want more gluten or less in this type of bread? More. More. Because you'll develop bigger bubbles. So you do want more gluten. Mm -hmm. Got it. You know what? what? I used to love playing with the dough. I don't think I like it so I much love anymore. It. It's so fun. Yeah. It's because you're not wetting your hands. I don't like the, the sticky feel. Right. I don't like that I just so That's why I add a lot of water. Yeah. So then it helps. Yeah. Okay, now you can just do stretch and folds, and then we're going to put it on a baking sheet to let it proof. Man, I just need to start baking again. That would be nice. So I don't have to bake. Huh? So that I don't have to bake. Yeah, it's just time. That's all. Technically, you can let this rise another time and then put it in here, but we're just going to cut down that time and um, put it in. Why? Huh? Why? Because I don't have enough time in the <laughs> day. Exactly what I was just saying. We're doing parchment down. We're going to drizzle the olive oil on the bottom. The water definitely helps a lot. It does, right? Yeah, a lot. You but just gotta then, keep it on there. Yeah. Then you're gonna plop it on here. I'm trying to get you some glue. <laughs> about to work this thing. Is that right? If you're gonna work it, you have to work it like a, a lot more. Really? It's like let it rest, do it again, let it rest. Do oh, it you gotta let it rest too. Yeah. I don't remember that. It is. Why are you laughing? I'm not laughing, I'm smiling. Why are you smiling? Okay. Huh? It's like snot. Babe! That's disgusting. No, thank you. <laughs> like that. You're going to just make a little rectangular and then just poke some holes on, on top of it. Yeah, like that. Like that. And then you're going to poke holes with your fingers yeah it is okay good now we're going to let that sit in the oven one more time to let proof one more time how long for 30 minutes ish until it doubles kind of normally the second rise is faster mm. <laughs> it's just bothering me really. <laughs> that lcd huh <sighs> I just need it to be even. All right, whatever. Poke holes. Yep. Just like that. Perfect. So what are the holes doing? They trap all the olive oil and it's delicious. But there's no olive oil on top. We're going to put some. Oh, you are going to put some. Yeah. It's covered. This is going to go back into the oven to let proof until it doubles. So maybe just check up on it every 45 minutes ish. No, every, every 45 minutes. Check up on it every like 20, 30 minutes, I'd say. So however long it takes.
You want me to jiggle this? It's not hot. You touched it? Yeah. I took it out, didn't I? My fingers are sensitive. Let me just put it in quickly. It's already 751. You see how mean she is, guys? So bossy. You see that? <laughs> We have our batch of olive focaccia right here, and then we have just the regular plain one that we made earlier. I think this one is definitely the winner because it looks nice and crispy. This is a bigger batch for sure. This one is just was a very small batch. All right, I want to give it a try. We probably should let this cool down. I would highly suggest that you let this cool down all the way, maybe like at least 20, 30 minutes before chopping it. But I'm just going to cut it. Oh. But fresh bread is always so good too. I know. Okay, this one has olives in it, guys. I know. You don't know. Cool. It's nice and crisp. Oh, it's better with There's a reason for letting it rest. Ooh, ooh. I don't remember the exact reason, but ooh. it's there crusty. It's oh, it's so hot. But sometimes it's just so hard to wait. All right. Good. The flavor is good. It's, it should have risen a little bit more. So, this is definitely more fluffy. Did you let it sit for less time? Yeah. All right, olive, I think I'm going to favor the olive one. You guys should um, do some jalapeno. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This mm. one's the winner. Yeah, jalapeno, olive. Maybe like um, do the herb, herb bread. Italian one? Yeah. Put the jalapenos in there. The crispy crustiness of it is really good too. So like the bottoms and the tops of it. It's nice and crusty. Uh, six out of two. Six out of ten? Two. Yeah, this one looks very nice. Six out of two. Six out of two. Huh? This one. The crust is delicious. Thank you, babe, for making this. Look at you. We thank you so much for hanging out with us today. If you would love to try this, we would love to know what you think. And if you're new, we would love for you to subscribe and we will see you on the next video. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. This crust is good. That salt mm -hmm. hit the spot. You have to Very nice.